Okay, I almost believe we're live. Well, I mean, that should have been, I believe we're live um, almost uh, after a bunch of delays. I thought it'd be uh, on time today and everything else, but uh, well, there's uh, challenges. So I've got everything set up. Um, I wanted to look at, and this kind of occurred to me a little bit late yesterday. I haven't uh, studied enough of the of the uh, the uh, online details to it but uh i wanted to look at the ibm uh, 2210-24m and that is the um of course the unit that's on the bench behind me that's uh, a device that was dedicated use pretty much for having token ring both token ring and ethernet interfaces on it uh, almost to the, the nature of um, of being uh, uh, for bridging in this case. So let me go through. Now I might be hydrating a little bit um, and uh, actually doing a little bit of uh, breakfast as it is as I was just going through and uh, pushing through to get set up for the studio. I've got to attend to those other things as well. Um, but at least we're, looks like we're connected. I, um, I was even surprised. I had to set up the, the, uh, ThinkPad to get a, um, to get the, uh, display capture to my, uh, clear click unit back, back in the back. And I do have the, um, the page up for the, for what we're looking at, I, I gave a link in the video description. I'll put it in chat here in a moment as well. Um, and the unit that they have pictured there looks like it has the optional interface. I think that's an Ethernet the board that adds like four Ethernet connections onto it. But let me get that link. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised that they didn't have uh that IBM really didn't have uh more of um of these around with the the nature of I mean they they probably went uh pure token ring a lot of the time is what what uh, IBM wanted to do. And if you read actually the listing on this page the um, IBM really kind of suppressed the Ethernet models, as it were. Um, just to kind of show in the brochure of the the token ring based models, and there are other models. The um, we'll be looking at the Quick Start Guide in particular, and um, I was talking to. Um, chatting with Kevin last night and uh, hoped that uh, he had gone further in setting up his unit. I think he'd looked at some of the the, the manuals, but had not uh, gone too much further setting his up as well. But I thought just for the other nature of the things um, to where the um, where I didn't find all of my uh, coin cell battery stuff. I found uh, one of the holders. I didn't find the, um, I've got a, a grouping of items of the uh, two types. I found one type of um, battery holder and, um, uh, but I've got my batteries and things like that in the other location, just getting my, my, uh, my, 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 uh, low wattage soldering iron up here and getting into that unit and 
soldering in a, a, a battery holder. I don't have uh, to where that'll back up that that uh, NVRAM, as I'm thinking that the battery is the issue right now. But we'll get... Um, um, yeah, and I've got a number of these uh, ThinkPads. Of course, this one's been on the bench for a few weeks now for all the live streams running Windows 98. Most of mine are actually running Windows XP. I probably need to get uh, be more authentic and get the... Um, Let's go through and let's get fully on screen there. <clears throat> and I may have to, um, and really, so this is going to, and who knows, I may go through further adjust and bring up the, the webcam at the same time that I adjust the clear click display because that is what we have for that and in fact that might be a good after we go through the initial um thing of here i'm going to get um <clears throat> going in fact i may get up i'll get my curious mark um um uh, mouse pad out this is the 360 mouse pad that you can find available in the, among the Curious Mark merch. And uh, just get a basic uh, mouse pad over to the side here. And I do have, in fact, I've got bags that are more... Of course, I, I've got my, uh, and I had to go through and start up. Yeah, just make sure everything reaches. Um, I doubt if I'll have to go through and plug this in. Initially like that, but let's, what the heck, let's go through and do that. So a green cable for the um, the token ring. Unshield the twisted pair. Um, that's Ethernet. Okay, I do have some cabling, Ethernet cabling back here. And I don't know if this one may be better. Of course, the, the um, let's use that for the ThinkPad. There's no real need to put it on Ethernet, but let's go through and do that. And just so everything has some interfaces that we can uh, connect to. Or it's plugged, they'll be plugged in. And speaking of being plugged in, let me get back to, and as I say, I'll go through and adjust this probably a little bit. We're going to bring up Hyper Terminal. And I think that there's a, there's like a bootloader that has to be, That these units have to use, but we'll find out here. Let's hide the group. Let's make that full screen. It's funny, it goes through and actually preserves the, um, well, or is it just caching the, because the, the 2210 is not started up here. We'll get it going. Plugged into power to start it up. Let's get switched over. And we're going to make some adjustments here of that.
we should see. Okay, there we go. Okay, so of course the, the older cast results there in gray, those should feed up as it goes through and loads a little bit further. I'm gonna go through and just I mean, because this is not necessarily going to be just like a, a Cisco to go through and okay. get on screen that way. And actually, as it is, I kind of block. Well, I've got a lot of uh, sky to my webcam. Go through. Now that I'm not not understanding why my webcam is more of a, almost like a four by three in this instance. Aspect ratio. Okay. And I don't know why that's kept that gray. Okay. Okay, and I heard about this in the manual. Let's let, let's do a stop. Okay, that restarts the router. Yes. This is my first time in this, so okay, so encapsulation. For WAN interface one, this does have some WAN interfaces on the front of the unit. Um, of course, if you're on the page, you can see them too. It's almost easier to show. Well, that's kind of washed out, not zoomed in. Um, but it's got ultimately four WAN interfaces. And um, for these were effectively not, you know, these are, I may get some connections for that later on, but we're not going to really be using those. And so I don't know if we just go through and do the, okay, so if I do an enter and as PPP, RS-232 DTE is fine, probably. So it shows that it shows the default configuration. You know, in Cisco world, we just go through and we'd shut down these interfaces. Um, so the bracketed choice is the default. And we're setting it up as PPP and then the RS-232. So that's all four. And that might be a really interesting to do to get the effective cables to do RS-232 over this to do a, a serial communications um, in the future. That might be really, okay. Interface five is token ring. Speed in megabit per second. We're gonna do 16. My hub is set up for 16. Megabit per second. The uh, the token ring adapter that's here is set up um, for 60 megabit per second, and as well as my Netfinity 7000. And so, and you cannot mix ring speeds between token ring. Okay, so this is figured, or at least it has a selection for the shielded twisted pair or the unshielded twisted pair, which is the ports down here. It's asking me which interface I want to use. I'm plugged into the unshielded twisted pair, shielded twisted pair being that that DB or DE9, um, the nine pin connector, old standard interface. So we're good there. It should actually get prompting us 
Okay, and it didn't go through for the Ethernet. Portion of that. Save this configuration, yes. Configure bridging. This is going to be like too easy. <laughs> okay. And so type R at any time of this level to restart the br bridging configuration. STB will be enabled on all LAN interfaces. I guess the B is probably a bridging um and then we have this srt bridging now i don't know if there's different levels to the bridging uh of the way it does it let's go ahead with just the defaults for now okay you're now configuring the source ryan part so SRT being source routing, uh, like a, a transfer or a, um, okay, bridge number hex of this router. It's wanting to go with the default of A. That's the only one that I that I have. Um. So probably default is fine. Interface five port two is of type token ring source routing on this interface. Sure. Okay, of this segment number of this interface one to dash f f f, and set to a one. I'm not sure in segment numbers and what all that means. Okay, configures. Okay, so we have interface configured for STB, interface zero, port one, Ethernet, interface five, port two, token ring. And it didn't, you know, so it didn't prompt me, and I don't know if it's a choice between the interfaces of the um, unshielded twisted pair or the AUI is what we have for the for the ethernet side and um so and i'll actually get to the point of i would um okay and so let's do yes to configure protocols configure ip now i'll have to reference Okay. Configuring. Okay. Configure IP on this interface. Now this um, this link, and I'm looking, glancing up. I don't see a link light on the twenty ten. I just want to make sure. And so I'm seeing on my switch, and that's that's a ultimately gigabit um, ethernet line. I'm seeing a link light at 10 megabit per second. It's lit amber. And of course, with the AUI connection, that means that this interface is, uh, the ethernet interface is 10 megabit per second. And so, um, now the interface, um, the Ethernet interface, and of course the brackets just show a blank. Now I don't know if there's a DHCP level to um, Ethernet. I can go through and I can give it a a uh, a static IP on my network, and I should have actually planned a little bit for that because. I'll have to go through, I think I know which, um, 
for what I want to do. I'm going to get to go through and work with the um, the DHCP server on the token ring side just to go through what we'll also do is to bring up and that takes a little bit of time to do okay network places properties and this should show both sides to effectively Okay. I guess there's not a, maybe even <clears throat> IP config might be a better three dot two for the DHCP server. I'll have to look at my DHCP scope on the token ring side. Okay, so three dot two. Just to remember my okay, the conventions at play here, and for yeah, that on the Ethernet side, I have DHCP occurring, although. It's real easy for me to come up with. Okay. Let's do, let's do a command prompt. Um, IP config. Okay, so there we have the um the interfaces of both ethernet and token ring it's basically me just deciding what i want to use okay so our scope okay our address pool is starting at uh 10.1.3. 10 ending at 10.1.3.50. So I'll probably do a, like a 51. And I believe I can do. In fact, we're going to go through and. Even though this won't necessarily show. whether all devices may be going through and 51. Okay. So it's not showing anything on the IPs that I'll probably select for that. And of course at the, uh, the proper moment in time, I'll access it from my, from my, the ThinkPad, and I'll go through and unplug the. Um, I'll go through and unplug the Ethernet on the on the ThinkPad. So, just to show that that is um, going through and working. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the um, Ethernet interface. Zero. I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the address I just pinged in the network setup that I have here. We're going to set that to 10.1.0.51. That should be available IP. Uh, of course, it should prompt us for the subnet mask. It, it goes through and assumes a default of 255.0.0.0 since we're on a, a class A network. But actually, 
the subnet mask is ultimately that 255.255.255.0, ultimately a class C address. And okay, WAN PPP. We're going to actually specify no for that. It's interesting that we can give. Okay. So we're going to go through for no for the um for the WAN interfaces. Those are the serial connections. As I say, in the Cisco world, we'd go through and just shut down those ports. We're not using them. Um, yes, we want to configure the token ring interface, IP address. So we're going to do 10.1.3. Dot fifty one for that. The token ring interface that I have with my um, the Netfinity seven thousand being the DHCP server, um, you know, that is actually giving out, and it's actually assigned the uh, ThinkPad here a a um, an IP address via DHCP. Same thing for the subnet mask. These are actually class C. Okay. Dynamic routing. And we're probably gonna go with the default, just saying yes. Um, okay, OSPF, and no, we shouldn't. That's interesting. And, you know, reading the information, the documentation on the 2210 of how it is so uh, capable. We're going to specify no for OSPF. That's a, um, I think that's like what, an ASN number? My routing, um, I'm, of course, I'm not CCNA. I've had brief exposure to to some of these things. Okay. Uh, SNMP. Later on, we're going to do that. Um, for the purposes of like network monitoring and things like that. At this time, we're just going to say no. Okay. So save this configuration. We're going to say yes. So IPX, no, not at this time. It prompt probably prompt for the TCP. Well, it went through the TCP. Um, let's go through and let's look at the booting aspect. Okay. IDB boot record using this information. I don't know if that's like, like a diagnostic. Okay, service port. We, we're we connected to the service port right now. Let's just say yes for that, just to kind of go through and confirm. Um, we're going to go with the defaults of how it's set up right now. Modem control. Now, these 2210s, it's interesting because they can actually have a uh, another service port. This is actually... Um, viewed as uh and actually i think we're on service port two being on the front panel the other um service port is uh it's it's on the back and that's actually designed it, it has a modem that you can get for that i'd be even interested in configuring that i need to look at um and I, I saw in the manual, and I don't have any, it's indicator lights on the back side of this. I don't, uh, I'll have to look a little bit more of where, maybe it's this port, it, this blank here. There's a blank with, with two screws. 
and um you can so you can have a modem connected um as service port one to to uh, ultimately access this uh, remotely and so we're going to let the router restart here as i say at the proper time i can go through and i'll um i'll de i'll detach the ethernet interface on the thinkpad and see if and make sure that we're routing through and the thinkpad should actually get an address We'll get an address through the DHCP server, but then that browse that those that bridging should be, yeah, OS distance vector protocol that uses doesn't use ASN, just network IDs. Okay, but a deeper level of routing than um, what I'm attempting here. Uh, it's nice to know that I have. Um, that I have uh, access to that level, but okay. So we've got an asterisk MOS operator control. I'm not sure if that's a, where it does. Um, of course, the thing is what we can do is we can ping, let's ping from the ethernet side. Okay, and so we're getting a reply. You really can't see my Netfinity screen, but we're getting a reply back from the the Ethernet interface. Um, now we're going to go through. We're going to uh, ping the token ring interface. We're getting a reply back from it as well, and you know. Ping is a an excellent diagnostic tool to tell me whether the port is responding. We're going to look at the uh, the the ThinkPad Ethernet. Well, actually, uh, look at both interfaces. So there. And actually, I want more of a, uh, so there it's showing the, um, from the ThinkPad, showing to the NetFandy 7000. Um, our entire network, you would think that that would show, well, I don't know, it, uh, in a sense, I thought it would show itself as well, but I would really have to. And I, I don't think that we have, yeah, see there, it's interesting for the resource because we don't have a password that's set. Okay, I'll, I'll have to go through and actually create that. Um, so, I'm just trying to think on, okay, so we have the internet connection wizard. I don't even know if the internet connection wizard might go through and prompt me. And, you know, we're talking years ago, 25 to 20 to 25 years ago, I was going through this uh, so much. Okay. Now I don't know if it'll do. And let, yeah, we'll leave the proxy server checked. Although I think in a lot of cases we don't necessarily. And it, this may actually slow down. Uh, no, we don't. Benito. And of course, the old address on MSN or Microsoft won't show up. Um, we're going to go through.
Now I still have the the Ethernet connected to this. Uh, going through and detecting proxy settings. So really, for all that. Yeah. I was just wanting to go through and verify that we have internet so far. We should be able to pull up the old net. I'm going to go through. Okay, it's finding the site. Now, DNS otherwise on this. In fact, let's go through. Let's pull up. Uh, accessories we want to do just a command prompt. We're going to do an IP config. Okay, so that's interesting that the Ethernet adapter didn't acquire an address, which is fine. I mean, it should have normally done that over DHCP. I'm going to go through and actually unplug. And this time I'm actually going to go through. I tried to do a repeat. Okay. So default gateway and the DHCP server. And that's actually correct. Now, trying to think ultimately because um, so really in reality the default gateway should be <clears throat> the, the bridge in it because my hub which is the dot one address is only token ring that's not a way out to the internet gateway is always your way out to the internet um so let's close that close that we're actually going to go through <clears throat> to get into okay now these are the um these are all the PCMCA adapters that I've had on this unit uh as we know from the IP config it's this auto that's in there right now in fact I I went through and closed Let's do that again Okay, so the auto token ring uh, PC card is the one that's active right now, has the MAC address and all that. Um, so everything aside otherwise, and so getting the address okay. We may have to go through and we can we can try and countermand this, but I'll ultimately want to put that on my DHCP server entry for the scope that the gateway address for token ring is at dot fifty one. 
Gateway has to be on the same subnet, of course, but that's the path out to the internet. Um, of course, DHCP Okay. There are the bindings. That's even interesting that we have that fast uh, infrared protocol, John. Okay. So, okay. And that was looking at the adapter. I actually want to look at the TCP. Okay. So this is set up to automatically detect address. We're gonna we're gonna countermand. We're gonna give a the address of that of that gateway. Okay, Windows ninety eight, and of course it wants to go through. We are pretty much through the uh, configuration of the twenty two ten. So I'll close that. Not that I really have to worry about, but so we have actually the Ethernet interface disconnected now. And I'm not sure why. I mean, Windows 98, I think, can only have one interface at a time that's that's um that's active that way is uh is what i'm remembering i mean you can't have uh, i don't think you can have two interface levels to the um to this now i've left this plugged in although i i'm trying to think of the configuration you know this is not worrying about any time and date i didn't think of checking any of that stuff but um But this is actually, um, it's been fairly easy, not really any matter of um, stumbling through like I thought would be the thing. Um, I thought that that was what I would be getting into. And like I say, for for getting the network running, um, okay, and that reset the gate the gateway back to what's getting from the DHCP server. So I am probably, and I can ping within the the network, most likely. We're gonna ping the the Netfendi seven thousand. So I'm at the I'm at to set that in the scope of the of the um, okay. I'm at to set that in my scope of the. Okay, the address pool. Just okay. So that should be, I think, my scope. Okay, all oh, scope options. Okay. Where do I set? Won't have any reservations, of course. I just pull. Okay. Okay. Properties. Okay. Start. Where do I have?
exclusion range. Scope. Configure options. Okay, I should have the gateway. I would think that that would be because you're passing the gateway address and otherwise I'll I can go through and um I can set an address manually on the Windows 98 system. I thought it would give me there's got to be some option time asset router array of router okay so there okay that's the that's the router which is the effective gateway address structure that i had added up and in reality that was a non-existent address otherwise on the network um okay so i've got that uh we want to apply i have to think that i i'm in a an age where I actually have to go through and apply. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna see if we can do just an IP config renew. Okay. Okay, and since we have more than one and I'm trying to do a I'm not sure why it's not doing a, a repeat of the keyboard. Since we have more than one interface, it's it's going through and Huh. I may just have to go through and, and do a restart. This might be easier. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting for that. Okay, we're effectively um, not on daylight savings time. <clears throat> But um, yeah, rather than go through and all that uh, renew and all and everything else, we're redoing all the um, yeah, correct. Um, I'm I'm putting the complexity of the DHCP server in place there. Um, and I could go through and I could just do a static address, static IP address on the um, on the ThinkPad. Um, now, the thought too, you know, it's DNS aspects too. And I think for the, um, Okay, so DNS servers. 
And so this is the DNS servers that it has there are ultimately uh, my firewall on the Ethernet side for the, the entire network, my router there on the Ethernet network. So that should resolve DNS correctly as well. Um, so... Uh, And as I say, I used to do all the, this networking stuff all the time back in the day. Okay, so that has the proper gateway set up. Um, you know, so the DHCP server is, of course, where it got its address. Um, so we could go through. Let's even do a thought of pinging the... Um, the Ethernet interface of the Netfinity 7000. Let's try that. We get a reply. Because I, I think that everything is, is going to be effectively working. We could go through and we could ping our ultimately our gateway address, our way out to the Internet. And this is on the Ethernet side. Now, I don't know if I necessarily have that interface set to respond to pings on the internal network. I thought I did. Now, being able to ping the, the Ethernet interface of the NetFanny 7000, that resolves that we're, that we're seeing that, that Ethernet side of things. And we go through, of course, like I say, it won't be able to resolve. And we could even do uh, the Arden tool or something like that would also would also show uh, I don't think. that and I, I probably should have set because this is doing the finding site now, I don't think I have any web. I'm trying to think of what I have for, um, see, because this should be able to resolve. Addresses. You would think and I would think that that let's go through. This is just thinking on the Okay, unknown host. So we still don't have maybe the DNS resolving for that aspect. Yeah, that would be interesting too for...
I'm going through. I should have had. Okay. So that was my. And of course, on the Netfinity 7000, it's going through. This is the Ethernet side. Ultimately, but if I have problems on the Ethernet side and all that resolution, okay. now we ought to check. I should check some other things, but it's good to have a comparison of the Netfinity. Okay. So can we ping? And I probably need to look in in the um, chat just to see. Okay, so there I'm able to ping the <clears throat> my gateway address. from the Netfinity. Okay. pinging my domain as well, just to kind of see, and it's thinking about that from the Netfinity 7000. That's not gonna give a reply. Meaning we're able to go through Okay. There's so many um, locations that really don't have, um, that don't respond to uh, IMCP, the ping stuff now. Okay. But I mean, we're connected. I mean, I'm trying to hit internet wise, um, but I mean, we're connected otherwise for the token ring. It's going through the hub to get to the Netfinity 7000. I'm trying to do routing across the. Um, Okay. Not find server. I'm still wondering if my if effectively my bridging is okay, pinging the Ethernet side. I'm trying to think of something. Is it not routing? Let me look at comments here. Um, DNS entries for the token ring card. Um, and that really shouldn't, you know, I should be able to ping these addresses. I I think it's only configured as a bridge. It's not doing the routing.
Yeah, but I went to and I was able to ping the the uh, my firewall gateway from the NetFinny seven thousand, which is not giving me a response on the ThinkPad, which everything being equal. Um. So the yeah, there's something to the to the routing level of the. Uh, it's doing bridging. It's doing bridging across the twenty two ten. Um, I would have thought it that would do the um, a routing level too. I mean, with the. TCP settings that we did through that. I'm not able to ping. See, I can ping. I tried pinging the, um, the address of the as I say, the comparison between the NetFinny 7000 and being able to ping it being connected to the Ethernet interface, if it's able to go through and ping an address that the ThinkPad can't, then Let's and let's pull up the DHCP because I could go through. Let's add a little bit of um, I can go through and add more DNS to the to the DHCP aspect, although really. Okay, I think it has, to, yeah, there's some time that it has to go through. And I'm on Comcast here. Um, which it is, these are the DNSs. I mean, we should be able to do I wonder if I can even do no 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 wanna do these two this one is that okay apply. Um, I don't necessarily have to, I don't necessarily have to remove that entry. I'm just wondering, yeah, let's go through and let's, okay. So let's apply and okay. And let's just restart the ThinkPad again. Just for a quick way of it being able to resolve new address. And I'm wondering for you know, should we be able to run some old school
Okay, I tried writing an NS lookup command. Um, just to see if I'd be able to connect on. And of course, DNS servers being um, locked down as well these days. I want to look at something. We're going to go through and we'll. Oh, and I'm going through and I'm even specifying. I didn't have any www in there as well. Um, I. Um, that might be really interesting for all that. I don't know why it's an offline. And I should have even set Okay. I mean, I should be able to to Just really confused to why why I'm able or not able to go through and hold that up even on the Netfinity. Um, and at least it's it's duplicating. Okay. I can't understand why my the Ethernet interface on the NetFanny seven thousand is also not able to pull up these addresses that I should be able to hit even with an older web browser. Are we able to... Boy, this just says, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Even on the 7,000, I want to get a baseline of what I should be able to do on the, on the, on the NetFanny 7,000 because it's connected to an Ethernet interface.
and just to have that as a comparison to what I'm able to do on the ThinkPad. And the NetFanny 7000 is also just acting kind of stupid for all that. Um, And I mean, even though something like a clock should not impact I'm just really confused to why Okay, so that could be a big part of things. So the Netfinity Okay. Because I could be confusing it with the token ring entries that I've put in there. Is I think what it what is happening on the Netfinity seven thousand. Okay. <clears throat> token ring adapter. So now I have the default gateway set, you know, and I'm thinking, well, gosh, the NetFendi is going through an Ethernet interface. To get out to the Internet. Okay. So we have that. Although that is probably going through. So we have um, internet back resolved because I had the, the, I had that Spurus gateway entry in there. That was going through and affecting things, even for the, um, for the ethernet side. And of course, this is probably going through the ethernet interface, which Okay. I can go through and disable Okay.
Okay, so that is disabled now. But that, so this is going through the token ring side now. Effectively, that's the only network interface of the NetFendi 7000 that's active. And it is having, it's not routing over the token ring. Okay. Um, so And so I'll bet for a baseline on the NetFinny 7000, we could go through and we could disable Ethernet interface. I'll bet you I will not be able to ping I wouldn't be able to ping the my gateway out to the internet now. Zero dot one. Okay. So I don't know if there's just some routing, more routing that we need to um, to set up on the twenty two ten. Is what it sounds like. Um. I'm going to go through because we have all the network entries set up otherwise. Just not. Okay. And I thought there is, okay. And see, we could go through that startup config again at some point. And I, I, undoubtedly, I probably will just to kind of go through and see if there's um, otherwise something that I'm that I might be uh, that I might be missing. Let me get back over to the comments here. <laughs> well, and Hugh, the yeah, that's that's true. That's that's strange for the TCP. Maybe there's even something like port ports that are have to be allowed. I just wish I had a a good. See, but with the Ethernet interface of the that Fini seven thousand enabled, I'm able to ping my gateway on the Ethernet side, my router, my main router. With it disabled, I cannot ping that, which should be that should that. ICMP should be routed over to the and I mean the other thought is 
doing something fancy like trying to tell net to in fact let me look through to see if I even have the tell net you know trying to tell net on to the and of course that's going through to connect to the Ethernet interface of the 2210 that's still not checking the routing, the bridging across the 2210. Um, and really, as far as a frustration level, I, as I say, 20, 25 years ago, I used to do this pretty commonly, although more with Cisco gear. And um, going through to... Uh, this is not a necessarily an uncommon thing to me uh, to hit a brick wall or hit some aspect that, uh, that really just didn't work. Um, and... I'm going through right now and I'm checking... Because I, I also want to see kind of the um, what I've got or what I'm able to do to access the 2210 otherwise. Okay, so I do have the Telnet client on this machine. I want to try just for... Um, Okay, so I want I want to just see if I can um, do the. Now this is going to the Ethernet interface. Okay, and I'm able to hit the prompt. And of course, no password or anything like that set. Um, I'm able to hit that the uh, the telnet through the Ethernet side. Now, the thought is that. Yeah, and so I'm trying to tell that to the token ring interface side from the Ethernet through the Ethernet side and not able to hit that, which is uh, par for the course. It sounds reasonable um, that I'm going through. I mean, I could probably do the other way. And of course, on the um, on the ThinkPad side, I could go through and do the same thing to where I could. Uh, they should have the Telnet client as a default, meaning that it's Windows ninety eight. Just to show. Actually, okay, so let's do through the token ring side. So there we have a telnet session. And by the same by the same uh, thought, I should not be able to access the Uh, 
Okay. So let's actually do. I should not be able to hit the Ethernet side. Oh, I did. I'm able to do that here. So I'm able from the ThinkPad, I'm able to hit the Telnet. For um, for both the Ethernet and the token ring side. Um, Yeah, I I mean I'm gonna have to sit down with the uh, with the the thought and really I, what I've learned over the years too a troubleshooting aspect it's nice um, to have more than one person because in the diversity of the of the discussion just throwing up ideas and everything like that that helps to troubleshoot a device um, I found that very worthwhile I just. You know, really from the aspect of it, the IBM is a, a little bit of a more unknown interface to me. I would think going through the, um, and I'll have to look through the the manuals that are there linked in from that page to find out once initial, there's got to be a little bit more setup um, to this for that, for that routing to occur. And the nice thing is here too, is I can, I can hit the ethernet interface from my modern system. Um, I can go through and I can have screens of showing the configuration of the 2210 to be able to try some things and to do the basic things like pings before I'm able to go through and access the outside world. Now, the token ring side, the that gateway address and things like that. I've got the token ring network set up correctly for, uh, and the DHCP server passing that gateway address to the machines that are getting the IP address over the network. Um, what I could also do, and even though I like the Windows 98, and Windows 98 should be able to access um, the a lot of the same things that I'd be able to do in like Windows XP. That you know, my newer ThinkPads being Windows XP and stuff like that, that's not really going to give me any benefit here for the troubleshooting. Once I get it all set up, it'll be nice to go through. Uh, being able to plug in a, th a ThinkPad over the the token ring network and it being able to access the internet or going through and being bridged over a device. Um, I wanted to bring out the 2210 because being that it's almost a dedicated, the, the 24M being almost a dedicated function to bridging. We saw the setup routine going through and asking if we want to do bridging. Um, I'll have to maybe look at that set process and some of the other options just to see if that there's some older conventions maybe that are being used. Uh, we also saw the things like it's asking us if we want to set up uh, IPX. That That is going to be really interesting to go through and having an older system with IPX, not necessarily TCP IP, to be able to go through and um to uh, uh to have those devices connected as well so um the yeah token ring from uh, it's not using the fit dot fifty one and so there on the that gateway address um 
I can see from inside the and I almost even kind of wonder too with my and I'm not trying to make the situation more complex, but I'm wondering about um, doing some um, DNS stuff from the NetFinity 7000 as well uh, for the portion of the token ring or the internal network or something like that down the road. I mean, that might be um, something of the, the token ring set up. For the bridging means set up, it should be able to access those um, the DNS and stuff like that, that shouldn't affect the lower levels of the ping stuff of going through and trying to um, really knowing how it's routing and hitting those um, those things. Now, Because really on the network setup of the of the ThinkPad that I have now, it should know that all the addresses that aren't on that local subnet are accessed through the gateway. Um, really for the connectors I'm using, um, on the ThinkPad I have a PCMCA um, adapter, token ring adapter, and that's going through to my hub, to my 8239 hub. Um, everything's getting through to and see nothing should be countermanded on the, uh, for the, like the token ring hub a, a gateway address or something like that. Um, as I say, I'm normally, I'm working with these IBM interfaces, which the 8239 hub and the 2210 are just a bit different um, than the interfaces that I'm, that I'm used to working with. And I need to, especially RTFM, I need to, look at that documentation that is there on the um because they may have a discussion on the um the routing concepts within that um and again you know going through to that page the page that I brought up, you know, for the thumbnail, for going through and basically um, for study. So they even have the multiple multi-protocol router descriptions and configuration scenarios. I need to go through and read um, some of those aspects. I don't think that things like the WAN connections are coming into play on the 2210. It'll be nice getting those functional later on. Um, they have uh, even these programs for, um, and I'll, I'll have to do something like port these to the to the ThinkPad. Um, to go through and uh, in. Uh, perhaps install those programs and um, to look at what those can do, how they can um, how they can go through and uh, I'm looking at the zip. Yeah, those might be even to, to uh, be a good uh, experimentation too. There's even an OS2 installation, a command script for the, I'm looking down that page, I'm looking for 
Uh, the IBM Multi Protocol Routing Services Configuration Program 3.2. That sounds uh, routing services. And then it even has a second link of the um, uh, Routing Services Configuration Program 3.1 plus other programs. Um, this sounds like uh, routing services configuration. That sounds like something that I need to run on the ThinkPad to um, to be able to go a little bit further with this. Um, I need to go through and check some basics on my ThinkPad. <clears throat> and like I say, I even have the... Um, so this one has the parallel port. Windows 98 may have an issue with if I do something like a um, parallel port zip drive. And I do have a zip drive connected to the uh, to the Netfinity 7000 as well. Um, just thinking of going through and being able to get the programs over to the uh, ThinkPad, uh, um, one of my ThinkPads with Windows XP may even be a little bit better for the ability to run the older Windows 98 programs, plus being um, uh, just a little bit more functional, being U more USB connections on there or a little bit better ways to, for me to move programs on there. But I think that... that um, Multi-protocol routing services configuration program is what I need to run because we're probably talking about an IBM program that is dedicated uh, to the use of configuring these these units. And as we've seen in other YouTube channels, um, the 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 C uh, the C libretto. Uh, YouTube channels and things like that, going through those those programs that they that uh, the manufacturer did were were really helpful at that time for going through and helpful in the modern age now too for going through and configuring these devices. Um, yeah, no. So it's supposed to be bridging and see it's not a transparent and so another aspect that i wonder 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 is it's not transparent bridging either it's it's where i'm going through and with different subnets there has to be a router between different subnets to route between those and that's what I could be having happen as well, that I'm going through and I'm not relying on any examples of IP address configurations. I'm going through and the setup routine, and this acts, I mean, this is a, the 2210 is a router. It's a, it's to me, the notion of the transparent bridging is not there. The, the concept of having separate, having the token ring as a separate subnet uh, to the ethernet subnet. And I, down the road, I almost want to maintain the separate subnets and not necessarily do a transparent bridging because to me, transparent bridging and everything being on the sub same subnet, the connection going through and resolving that and transparently bridging. I don't like that aspect for mixing everything together of not having um, separate subnets for the type of devices. Um, to me, for a, a, if I had a small network that I I was unconcerned about the connections uh, going on to there, I'd do that transparent bridging. But think of the networks I'm uh, that I'm wanting to do, especially. That's why I set up the Netfinity Seven Thousand to do DHCP, 
was the aspect of plug in a, a ThinkPad as a, as a good example machine. And it's able to get an IP address, the gateway address, the DNS addresses that function for it to get connected to all the subnets, all the, and the internet. So I think there's a, from here, it's, it's just a matter of running um, this configuration, this routing configuration program to see what that shows and see um, uh, there. And it's, I mean, we can do that as another live, we can do that as a live stream. I may want to look that over first just to kind of see what I learned from that. But um, these, again, these live stream videos are, it'd be nice to have some resolution to them sometimes to, for at the end of the live stream for things to work like expected. But I think that there's uh, some further steps and I need to make use of those um, of those programs and other resources to get this working. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 glad to go through and use or trying to use unshielded twisted pair RJ45. That's the one I've got to my hub. That's what I, um, and something that, you know, the old Moz, um, the 8228 and things like that, really there's no harm in using that stuff. Uh, in fact, a lot of time, just taking out the software component or just having a basic hardware connectivity takes some things out of the equation and makes things easier in a lot of instances. <clears throat> but I also want to go through and um, have that nice ability to use unshielded twisted pair cables. Um, and yeah, there's if there's a routing program uh, that IBM has furnished for this. And and also, you know, that that also is the other sub-models of the 2210. There were many, many other models. Um, but if they're saying a, a, uh, to have a routing services configuration program that's dedicated to the 2210, I need to run that program. I need to find out what that has to it and what help that that can be other than the somewhat cryptic um, console or telnet interface that I'm doing here. Um, and it, you know, it works out, it works out great to have this, <coughs> for me to have this uh, access to this to where I can do a question mark and I can see um, see the the basic commands that I could do on there. Um, but this is, I mean, this is just a handful and this is more of a, with the machine in operation, this this interface is not really designed to to really cover a lot of things, I don't think, to really cover the configuration. Uh, it's not a Cisco level going through on the CLI to be able to pull up uh, the configuration of the device. Um, I mean, can undoubtedly can go through and to give some details um to this but i i think i need to involve those other programs so i do appreciate everybody's input i'm i'm like i say i'm not necessarily trying to um end a stream or to go through and 
uh, especially with the late start I had. And now at least we've gone uh, for, um, it's getting up, as I as I see it on my clock, um, uh, an hour and 45 minutes of live stream. Um, I just think that I need to look at some other things and run through some programs and maybe have another live stream of going through and using those programs. Uh, I do treat this the live streams as kind of an informal process of my viewers coming on, offering help in the chat because I'm not trying to be disorganized in a certain way or not going through and studying what I should be studying uh, beforehand to have a nice wrapped up video. I, I think I for this case, we're trying to learn things together. And um I'm going I'm coming into these a lot of time otherwise from a busy life and not being able to really study things over. Uh again I was hoping that Kevin would be on because he's he's gone through the other side where I think he studied a lot of the documentation, but really just hasn't had the opportunity to go through and to look directly at what the machine response is connecting up to a network and seeing what it does. And this is one piece again of the thought that, yeah, this would be great to get it working and to getting it bridging uh, even the down the road. I mean, I could use this as a bridge for the four megabit token ring um, but it's my intention, you know, to get, go through and get the Cisco running as well and to go a little bit further with that to being able to bridge the two different ring speeds and things like that. But I wanted to show, since I had the, the 2010 of, of the bridging aspect of what this has for interfaces and, and the way to do things, um, I think that program, if I have my assumptions right, going through and running that program, uh, I think that that'd be interesting on a live stream as well, just to see for us, everyone to participate, to go through and to look at that. I'd like to have that interaction as I'm looking at that program as well. I may go through and do a little bit of uh, work ahead of time to run that program and, and go through and analyze things. Um, but I like these this scenario as well of going through and just giving a, a a presentation warts and all and we're all learning together and we're all participating um for this and i i i like to do that i it just is a it's a really great thing for me to get the input of people uh to something that who knows that i may just be overlooking i may be just a, a still a little bit uh, asleep um and don't you know, haven't eaten my my Wheaties or something else for the day, something else to make me um, go through and kick in the, the gears for me to remember some of the uh, the concepts. I, I'm still good with the basics, but these older, these interfaces that are different from what I've experienced in the past, I just really don't know how to, to react to those. And IBM had a different way of doing things. In, in a lot of these instances. And even for the notion of, of token ring, uh, network can be a little bit different from what I'm used to on a regular basis. Um, yeah, and I think John's idea of having more than just that one think pad of, of me being able, I'm, I'm able to go through and uh, resolve some stuff to the on the net Fendi 7000, but getting um, getting a think pad or two with the uh, Windows XP, uh, the ability to go through and connect on an Ethernet interface and um, um, to just get a baseline of what those machines of the response this is the response over Ethernet, this is the response over token ring. And just move forward from there to um, to getting things resolved. So, so yeah, this is a stream that is going to go up close to two hours. But um, 
all must all good things must come to an end and um i think it's it's time to just wrap things up for how far we've gotten we saw that um despite the late start we saw a little bit of that initial configuration screens uh the the process there of getting prompted very nice interface from that regard of having defaults uh being able to go with the defaults a lot of time uh, we didn't see a true Cisco concept of the, it, it's wanting to have these. Um, it's talking about the the WAN port interfaces and things like that, and not necessarily an ability like the Cisco world of shutting down those unused interfaces. But we'll get to the point of even using those as well. And I need to look um, for the. Um, the connections out there and things like that for those WAN, they look about the same plug as what the Cisco has for its WAN interfaces, but getting cables and things like that able to do maybe, maybe some really neato things as far as uh, connecting cables and other systems, other equipment through those links as well. Um, those WAN ports being very common in the Cisco world as well, uh, and were used for, in a lot of cases for uh, connectivity too. So um, I'm glad everybody had a, a pretty good time, had some pretty good participation in chat. I was that I was able to see at times and getting up from looking at the keyboards and getting kind of lost in the moment myself, but um, you know. I think we uh, we all make a great team of going through there, and you know, thank you, Hugh, for saying yeah. It is very, very interesting. It's it's very interesting seeing these interfaces, these IBM interfaces, and how they had equipment set up all these decades later. Um, you know, we we're talking about the aspect of being about three decades later, and uh, what this equipment can do for us in connecting and bridging token ring a token ring network to our modern day ethernet interfaces being so prolific out there anymore uh for internet access and just the connectivity to the outside world from these token ring networks uh again this discussion is coming up a little bit on the Facebook group of of uh, people still trying to go through and locate uh, functional Ethernet adapters that they can use on their microchannel systems, and the you know me responding to say that the token ring is adapters are very common out there there there's there's a lot of them that have been scrapped but still available enough to to be able to locate and buy there's still enough of a quantity out there of very good adapters just that they are token ring and going to to get a you know using those adapters to set up a token ring network and certainly Relatively modern systems can participate on a token ring network as well. This NetFinny 7000, um, having the functionality of being a DHCP server for my token ring network, but then going through and having bridge devices that are able to connect up that token ring network to Ethernet. I think that's the goal of what we're looking at here. So thanks for everybody for tuning in. And I'm just going to close with this is IBM Museum. That's all I have for now. Thank you.